Marvin, the concept of our consciousness, our human consciousness, has been looked upon by innumerable generations of people as, as indicative of the specialness of human beings. Certainly theologians have talked about our souls, philosophers, the, 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 the specialness of, of, uh, of, of human thinking. From your background in computer science, the, the work that you've done in artificial intelligence and thinking about thinking, can you say there's anything really special about human consciousness? Well, I think there's something very special about human thinking, which I like to call reflectiveness or, or self-consciousness, if you like. And that's the ability to remember what you've been doing. And by remember, that's an interesting concept itself, because there are many ways to remember things. You can remember something as an image or as a sequence of sounds or as a diagram or mm -hmm. and then there are ways of remembering for which we have no words but uh, just as in a computer we can represent data in uh, maybe 20 different ways called data structures I think the brain has uh, a large number we've evolved a large number of ways to represent our previous mental states or part of them and I don't think any other animals have this ability to represent in many different ways what you've been doing recently and what were the results and so forth so that you can then uh, not only think about what you've done in the world but you can think about the course that your thinking proceeded along and you can say well I've wasted a lot of time I'm not doing very well on this problem <laughs> maybe I should think back and try to think about this using method four which is good for this kind of problem and so this is I think what makes us unique, able to imagine uh, situations that haven't happened yet, think of what would happen if I were there and I did this and then this and then that. Oops, that would be terrible. I'll think about this. And then you come back and deal with the real world as though you had already had several such experiences. Well, that's tremendously valuable, and I think we're unique in this. And, and therefore, what we're doing is internalizing and simulating different uh, worlds and testing them out in our in inside before we, we, we choose one and do it in the world. That's right, and because we have, uh, it's only since 1950 or so that we knew how to make computers do such simulations and uh, change them and search and uh, try different possibilities. We don't have any ordinary word for those processes. In computer science, there's thousands of new words, but we talk about consciousness or experience or self or identity as though nothing had happened. <laughs> well, th the term we would maybe self-reflective because you're thinking about thinking. You're thinking about mm -hmm. imaging yourself in the past or in the future and testing out these different alternatives. So, so you're imagining yourself going through a process. It's a, it's a self-reflection. That's right. And in my book, I also uh, use the uh, another level called self-conscious reflection. In self-conscious reflection, you're doing something even stranger, which is you're saying, are the actions I'm considering or I've recently done, uh, do those agree with my ideals and values that I've learned? And uh, that's, we could use the word conscience as well as conscious. So is this behavior up to my standards that I've learned from my culture or business or uh, parents and so forth? And I wonder if any animals have anything like that level. I really like this distinction between self-reflection, thinking about thinking, and self-awareness or self-conscience or self-conscious, whatever you want to say, a next level up, which you've differentiated, which some people don't. Some people just say the self-reflection is self-reflection. You've divided into two parts. One is thinking about thinking, and one is this higher level, which takes that and, I guess, integrates it with some values or, or some broader concepts. So how, how would that work? Well, that reminds me of where I think my technique is a little different from most other people. Most psychologists are afflicted with the disease I call physics envy, <laughs> uh, to <laughs> paraphrase Freud. Namely, they look at the history of science and they see this incredible discovery. Newton has three laws, and it explains almost all of mechanics. Mm -hmm. The law of inertia and the law of... Uh, equal and opposite reaction, and I forget the third mm -hmm. one. Uh, <laughs> force equals force equals mass times acceleration. 
F equals ma. Those three laws explain the motion of the planets and so forth. And then uh, eventually Maxwell comes along with four cute laws, mm -hmm. and that explains electricity and magnetism. And then uh, 50 years later, Einstein comes along, and he shows mm -hmm. that electricity and magnetism are the same yeah. thing, <laughs> and knocks out most of Maxwell's laws, <laughs> and now we're down to four or five. So the psychologists in around 1900 said, we can do that. We'll have a law of recency, which says uh, the more recently it happened, the more y better you'll remember it. Mm -hmm. And the more you're rewarded, the more you'll learn it. And stupid laws like that, which aren't true, <laughs> but they're true for rats and pigeons and <laughs> all the experimental animals they used for 100 years, and they got into our educational system and so forth. My idea is that uh, you don't want the simplest theory because it'll be wrong. <laughs> You know that the brain has 400 computers, so you want a theory that has more boxes than you need. Yeah. Philosophers have something called Occam's razor. Yeah. Always find the smallest, most compact theory that explains what's in front of you, and that'll be the best theory. No, <laughs> not if you know it's wrong. <laughs> so what I have is six levels, and the distinction between self-conscious reflect, self reflection and just plain ref self-reflecting thought is there so that there's a place to put new ideas about values and ideals and religions and beliefs and so forth. So I think if you have six levels, then you're free to get new ideas. If you follow Occam's razor, you're putting a straitjacket on yourself, and if you get a new idea that doesn't fit, well, you just forget it. <laughs> it's, it's sort of personal tragedy. But th these levels are, are um, uh, really represented in the brain, or, or, or they are uh, more symbolic structures that are categories that you can place different things in? I'd say that they're probably moderately real, because the way a brain, the way organs develop in evolution is generally you don't make changes in an organ so much as you make another copy of it and connect it up, and then you can mutate it. If you mutate an old structure, you'll lose too much. So I imagine that we do have in the frontal lobes uh, this self-conscious reflective level, but it's not very well defined. It uses parts of older ones and copies of so forth. It's very vague, and the boundaries aren't worth studying yet. So these two top levels, the self-reflection and then the self-conscience or self-consciousness levels, uh, may not be present in any animals, either one. Maybe not much of them, but I think uh, probably all of the, most mammals have a little bit of self-reflection, but of reflection, but not much. Now, I think, I think some mammals can plan ahead uh, the next two or three moves but certainly can't see at the self-conscious right. level. They can't see themselves in a new situation and imagine what they would do there. Now, theologians would come along and say, terrific, Marvin, I'm thrilled you've done that because now you have a, a, a vehicle for my immortal soul that I want to place in a human being. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's not clear that you have a pl you could have a place for an immortal soul, but what would you do with it? Yeah. Unless you tell me how it works, uh, I'm not interested. It's like mm -hmm. saying that there's an elephant in the next room. Uh, well, I could go and look, and it wouldn't be there. Uh, if it's a soul, I could go and look, and you're telling me it's invisible and indetectable, so I'll stop listening to you. 